This is video 30 in our series Analytical Mechanics. The uh, playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. In this video we're going to consider um, a rolling disk and consider the kinetic energy of the system. Now back in video 20 um, we determined that when you have translational motion and rotational motion that we derive this expression for the kinetic energy of the system. And we're going to use this now, this equation, to discuss the rotation of the disk when it's in pure roll. Pure roll meaning that it's rolling along with a, a, a car wheel without slipping. So if we have a pure roll situation, if for example we had a part of the tire marked off here and then it rolled along 360 degrees so it was now over here and the distance from center to center was the circumference of the disk 2 pi r then that would be pure roll. It's rolling along without slipping. Now the velocity here, this is the center of mass, and the velocity of the center of mass, of course that's the distance 2 pi r divided by the time. Now for this to roll 360 degrees, the amount of time it takes to do that, that's the period capital T. And the reciprocal of the period, that's the frequency. And remember that from physics, remember that 2 pi times the frequency, that's the angular velocity, omega r. So the wheel or the disk has an angular velocity, omega, and we know that whenever there is circular motion, there's an angular velocity associated with the circular motion and there is a tangential linear velocity. And the linear velocity, this is circular motion, it's a radius r. Remember the linear velocity, the tangential velocity, that equals omega r. Now for the rolling wheel, not only is the tangential velocity equal to omega r, but the linear velocity, the velocity of the center of mass moving along, that too is equal to omega r. And again, that's a consequence then of the uh, the pure roll situation. So now let's go back here and just do some very simple manipulations. This is V squared, but as we just saw in a pure roll situation, V we can write as omega r, so the kinetic energy equals one half m and this would be omega squared r squared r of course being the radius of the disk then we have plus one half now for a disk or for a wheel for that matter then the uh, moment of inertia about the center of mass, that is one half r squared times the mass of the disk. So we have this and then we have omega squared.
And now let's factor out 1 half omega squared and we have from here then m r squared plus, now we factored out one half omega squared so we have this expression one half r squared m and that is the kinetic energy. But this one half r squared m that is the moment of inertia with respect to the center of mass. And here we have m times the radius squared. Now if we consider this contact point right here C where the disk is in, touches the surface notice that the distance of that contact point from the center of mass is r. So we have m r squared. If you remember back now from video 19d, this entire expression that's in parentheses this is the moment of inertia about the contact point C. And that reason we say that is because of the parallel axis theorem. Remember if we have an object, if we know the moment of inertia of the object about the center of mass, then we can easily determine using the parallel axis theorem that we derived in video 19d, if we know the moment of inertia about the center of mass, we can easily determine the moment of inertia for any other point of the object. And here we're doing it for C, that point where the disk makes contact with the surface. That moment of inertia at point C, it's the moment of inertia at the center of mass that's this, plus the mass of the object, m, times the distance of the contact point from the center of mass. That's r, that distance squared. That's the parallel axis theorem. And that's what that is. So we can write that the kinetic energy of the disk is one-half omega squared times you know, the moment of inertia about the contact point C times omega squared. So the kinetic energy of the disk or of the wheel or of the tire, it behaves as if the entire disk was rotating about this contact point. Well, in other words, there's a part of the disk, this contact point, that has zero velocity with respect to ground. The tire might be going past at 100 miles an hour, but the contact point right there on the surface, where the, where the surface of the tire meets the pavement, that has zero velocity with respect to ground and it's behaving as if the tire or the disc is rotating about that point. Now, if it seems strange that this contact point here is zero velocity with respect to the pavement, let's consider the motion of the tire or of the disc in more detail. But right now, what we have right here then is that the kinetic energy of the disc 
is one half the moment of inertia taken about the contact point times the angular velocity of the disk squared. Now, as for the contact point here being at zero velocity with respect to the surface or with respect to the pavement, let's look at it in more detail. Here we have a disk The disk rotates with angular velocity omega. And up here at the top of the disk then, there's a tangential velocity that is equal to r omega. Down here there's a tangential velocity going in the opposite direction that is equal to r omega. But now, this is moving forward in pure rho. Here's the center of mass. And the velocity of this in pure rho, remember, equals r omega. So up here we have another vector to add on. This vector is the tangential velocity at the top of the disk, its magnitude is r omega, that's always true, plus now we have the linear velocity of the same magnitude, r omega. This disk is in pure rho. So up here at the top of the disk, its total linear velocity is 2 times v. Down here, we have the backward tangential velocity, and we also have the velocity of the center of mass. They're both equal in magnitude to r omega. Right there at the contact point, those cancel. So the velocity of the contact point with respect to ground indeed is zero. And as we saw when we consider the kinetic energy of the system, we can think of it then as the tire rotating about, the tire of the disc rotating about that contact point there, C. So we have it something like this. The disc rotates. It's rotating here, but we can also think of this. Here's the contact point, and the tire or the disc rotates about this contact point. So here then is a point on the disc. Its velocity, its tangential velocity, with respect to here, well, here's the radius. It's perpendicular to that. For this point here, here's the radius. It's perpendicular to that. So it's somewhat of a complicated system, but Nonetheless, at this contact point C, there is no velocity with respect to the surface. And again, the entire kinetic energy of the system can be expressed then just simply as one half IC omega squared, pure rotational energy. Okay, that's all we wanted to say in this video. In the next video, we will consider a different type of problem where we will put this equation to use to solve a specific problem uh, with that relationship.